in this lesson, we're going to be talking about limiting reactant, okay? Um, specifically, this video is over BCA table, um, which is one of the methods that you can use um, to solve limiting reactant problems. So the difference between doing stoichiometry and limiting reactant is in stoichiometry, if we're given, let's say, this equation right here. In a general stoichiometry problem, we were given just one of the reactants information. So let's say this was 10 grams, okay? In a limiting reactant problem, you're going to be given both of the reactant information. Because before, when we did stoichiometry problems, we just ignored um, what B was. And we just did stoichiometry based off one reactant. But if you are given both reactant information, this makes the problem a little bit more difficult. So you know you'll be approaching a limiting reactant problem when you're given information on both reactants, okay? So let's talk about the definition of what a limiting reactant is. So a limiting reactant is going to be one of the reactants that determines how much of the products are being made, okay? Um, and so a great example that we can use to talk about limiting reactant um, is food. So let's talk about um, hamburgers, okay? So if you look here, let's say, I mean, don't worry so much about my drawings, but let's just say we have two um, hamburger buns um, as one of our reactants, and the other is we have four hamburgers. So if we were to make the products, what this would look like is we would have, hold on one second, we would have two complete hamburgers made. Okay, so if you notice, we actually had four actual hamburgers to start with. So that means that we would have two hamburgers in excess. So here, the hamburger buns will be our limiting reactant. We were only able to make two complete hamburger hamburgers, and that meant that this right here, this is something called the excess reactant. That means that we're going to have some of that reactant left over, okay? Just because that limiting reactant is the one that limit how much products that we were going to make. So the overall message is that the limiting reactant will be used up first and will prevent um, the reaction going further. Okay, um, because we were not able to make, you know, one or two more hamburgers. So here it prevent us from making more hamburgers complete. Okay. Okay, so how do we determine the limiting reactant? So just one thing to keep in mind, you need to distinguish between what you start with and what what actually reacts, okay? So know what your reactants is and what your products is. No matter what, when it comes to stoichiometry, your first and most important step is to balance the equation. Okay, um, even if you see that there's some coefficients, you cannot assume that it's balanced. You need to verify that it is balanced. So that should be your most important step is to balance. So in a, what we're going to be doing is using something called a BCA table. Okay, so what it looks like is this. Okay, I'm sorry for not the complete straight lines, um, but a BCA table um, is considered a moles table. You only can put moles in here. Do not put grams in here, okay? Because um, last week we learned about mole ratios, and so here we need to have everything um, in moles when we use this table, okay? So let's talk about the B. The B stands for the before, okay? Um, hold on, let me fix this real quick. So this is a moles table. <clears throat> Um, the before means this is what uh, we start with, okay? So this is our reactants moles, okay? Um, and so generally what's going to happen is you're going to have an equation up here. Let's say this is our equation. So here, let's say you had 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, all right? Now, because this is before the reaction like occurred, should we technically have any products? No. So you can say um, that there are no products at this moment. Because if we had two containers, we have not mixed them yet. So here we would not have any products. Okay. Now C. 
This can be a little bit tricky. So this is called the change, okay? So what we know about chemical reactions, our reactants are gonna be the ones that are consumed, okay? So we need to use negative values in our change. And then with what we know about products, products are formed. So here we will have a positive, okay? With the change, this is the most difficult part, but here you're gonna try to figure out the limiting reactant. I'm gonna write LR for limiting reactant. And the goal is to have positive numbers in the end. Okay, so what that means is if we look at this right here. So remember, our limiting reactant is the one that is completely used up. Okay, so let's say I was like, all right, B has to be my limiting reactant. Okay, so here to figure out how much A was used, we have to use mole ratios. So if you notice, there is a one-to-one -one ratio between A and B. So here, how much A was used is 0.2. Now, unfortunately, if I do 0.1 minus 0.2, I get negative 0.1. That cannot happen. You can't just have a negative value um, in the end, okay? So here, this tells me that B is not the limiting reactant. So let me erase this. Now I'm going to try this as all the one used up. Again, it's still a one-to-one -one ratio. So here I'll put 0 0.1 right here. And in the end, B becomes 0 0.1. So this tells me that this is my limiting reactant and this is my reactant in excess. That means that I have some B left over. And because I jumped the gun and I didn't tell you what A is, A is called our after, all right? This is the result from the change. So this is after the reaction occurred. And so to figure out how much product was formed, we need to look, I'm gonna use a different color. I don't like that color. We're, we have to look at our change. Because remember, the negatives tell me how much was consumed to go to the products. So here, since this is all a one to one to one ratio, and these numbers are the same, we're gonna have a positive 0.1 meaning that we had 0.1 product made for that, okay? Now listen, it's gonna take some practice to use a BCA table. Um, this actually sets you up to practice um, um, ice tables in AP chemistry or higher level chemistry as well. Um, but I think the biggest thing to note is this helps us determine the math very quickly compared to dimensional analysis, okay? So let's do another problem. Okay, so in this problem right here, um, we are working with HCl and sodium hydroxide making water and sodium chloride. So I just told you that there's three moles of hydrochloric, at, oh, sorry, hydrogen chloride, um, and then we have six moles of sodium hydroxide. Um, so here, now there might be some problems where they give you grams and you have to convert to moles, which is completely fine. You guys know how to do that. So here I'm going to fill in what I know. So I know I have three moles and six moles. Now this is because this is the before, we should technically have zero products so far. Now, I'm gonna purposely choose the wrong one so we can, you know, see um, why it's not, okay? So let's say sodium hydroxide is our limiting reactant. So minus six. So here it is, and now listen, I should have said this, your first step is balanced. It's already balanced. It's all one to one to one to one. So here, this makes this um, minus six. And so unfortunately we will get a negative three, which we cannot have. So here, let's backtrack. So that's saying that sodium hydroxide is not our limiting reactant. So here, I'm try hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride. Um, so here, this is minus three, which gives us a positive three. So that should be the answer. Now, using the information from our change, we can figure out how much products were formed. So here it's all one to one to one. So this is a positive three, positive three, and there is the information for that. So if, let's say if the question asked you, what's the limiting reactant? You would say 
hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. If it asks you what is your um, reactant in excess, you would say sodium, sodium hydroxide. And let's say if they asked you how much of your excess remains, it would be three moles because that is in the after. Okay, and then let's say if they wanted to make the question a little bit more fun, let's say they ask you how many grams of water was formed. Well, we know three moles were formed. So here, three moles of water. And so the um, molar mass of water is going to be 18.02. So here, from when we go moles to grams, we'll multiply. And if you put that in your calculator, you should get 55.54, I don't know why I say 55, 54.06 grams of water was formed, okay? Now, the purpose of the BCA table is to just keep everything organized, okay? Let's do a problem where we actually have some coefficients um, instead of just one to one to one. So if we look at this problem right here, we have 75.3 grams of copper two chloride reacts with 106 grams of potassium iodide. So we want to know what mass of I2 can form. Um, and then what is the limiting reactant in the excess reactant, okay? Um, this reaction is a little bit weird. Um, this wouldn't technically be um, a double replacement like we've learned before. So I'm going to write out what this equation looks like. All right, so here's the reaction. Um, so our first step is to balance. So why don't you pause the video um, and try balancing this yourself, okay? All right, so this is what you should have gotten, 24241, two, okay? Now, we are given both reactant information. Um, so we're, and unfortunately we were given grams, so we need to convert that to moles, okay? So the molar mass of copper two chloride is 134.446 grams per mole. And then um, potassium iodide is 165.998 grams per mole. All right, so let's convert grams to mole real quick, okay? So here, 75.3 grams. Hold on, I think that was 75, yep. All right, of uh, copper two chloride. So when we go from grams to moles, we'll need to divide by the molar mass. All right, um, you should end up getting 0 0.56 moles of copper two chloride. And then we have 106 grams of Ki. We'll divide by the molar mass, which is 165.998. Um, you should end up getting 0 0.639 moles of Ki. All right, so now that we have our reactant information, um, we can put that into um, our BCA table, okay? So here we have 0 0.56, and then we have 0 0.639, okay? Now, we should technically have no products. So I'm gonna put 0, 0, 0, all right? So now it comes down to determine um, what is our limiting reactant. Now, it doesn't matter which reactant you choose. Um, you'll figure it out if you get a negative in your after, it is not your limiting reactant, okay? All right, so I'm gonna work with copper two chloride. So I'm gonna say that all of this will be used up, okay? Saying that this is my limiting reactant. So let's figure out how much Ki um, was used based off 0.56 of copper two chloride. Now you have to realize, um, if we have 0.56 copper two chloride consumed, it is a two to four ratio with Ki. So technically, if we simplified this, Ki is twice as much compared to copper two chloride. So here, we do a quick molar ratio, and generally what you do, instead of writing out a like dimensional analysis, you take this, multiply this, divide by this. Because here, if you look, four moles of Ki over two moles of copper two chloride, those units cross off, okay? And so here, oh gosh, I'm making a mess. Okay, so here, um, if you do 0.56 times two, you should get 
negative 1.12. All right. Unfortunately, if you do subtract that, sorry, I don't have that filled out, you should get negative 0.481. So this tells me that copper 2 chloride is not the limiting reactant because I have a negative value, okay? So here, let's erase our work. And this tells me that Ki is going to be my limiting reactant, okay? So here I'm going to subtract um, 0 0.639. And here we'll just divide by 2. Um, you should get negative 0 0.3195. And if you subtract those two values, you should get 0 0.2405. So here, because I have a positive value, um, that tells me um, that copper 2 chloride will be my excess and Ki will be my limiting reactant. That this will be my limiting reactant, okay? Sorry, I was having some uh, technical difficulties, okay? Um, so that answered question two. So I figured out, yes, that my limiting reactant was Ki and copper 2 chloride was my uh, excess reactant, okay? Now, we have to figure out... Um, what's going to be formed for our products. So we're going to have to use the information from the change. So here, if you notice, this has a 2 to 2 ratio. So because this is uh, 0 0.3195, I'll have positive, oops, positive 0 0.3195. And because this is 4 to 4, this value will also be over here. Now, it doesn't matter which, they're all in ratio with one another. So even if, if you look at this one, this one does not have, uh, this is a coefficient of one. So you either can use copper two chloride's value or Ki's value to figure out the molar ratio um, between that reactant and I2. So um, what you can do, you can just take this value and divide by two, or you can take this value and divide by four. It does not matter. Okay, you should end up getting positive 0 0.160. Okay, and then here I can just bring everything down. And we're not done because we have found the moles of I2, but the question wants the mass. Okay, so here I'm going to scroll up a little bit. So since we have 0 0.610 moles of I2, we're going to multiply by the molar mass of I2 which is 253.8 grams per mole, okay? So uh, take 253.8 times 0 0.160, you should end up getting 40.6 grams of I2 formed, okay? Um, again, a lot of this just takes a lot of practice. Um, I'm gonna have a, a quick problem up for you to try on your own. Um, this was a more difficult problem because there's a lot of converting from grams to grams and all that stuff. So this next problem will be a lot quicker um, and you can pause the video. So the question asks, four moles of H2 reacts with, with uh, four moles of O2 to form H2O. All right, so here's our reaction. How much H2O was formed from this reaction? And then the other question is how much moles were in excess? And again, I, I use the um, X and S just because it's easier to write for that. So here you can set up your BCA table. It doesn't need to be nice when you do it. Like you can do it as easy as this with no lines. Okay. Um, but make sure you do the first and most important step. Um, but yeah, pause the video, try this out yourself, and then I'll go over it. Okay. So let's do this. So first we have to balance. So make sure you make this um, two, one, two. All right. Um, we are given four moles of both reactants. So four and four, and we should have zero product. Okay. Um, now to figure out which one is our limiting reactant, you can do this however you would like. Um, but please note, let's say if you thought this was oxygen, four times two divided by one gives me a negative eight. So this, I'm going to get a negative here. So this tells me O2 is not my limiting reactant. Okay. So here you should have minus four. And so four moles times one divided by two should give me minus two.
okay? So I'll have a positive 2 here. Uh, I mean, you don't have to put the positive. I just did that. And so uh, if you look here, this is a 2 to 2 ratio. So since it's a 4 here, it's going to be a positive 4 here, okay? Again, just ratios, okay? I mean, if you wanted to, you could have done 2 um, times 2 divided by 1. You could have done that. That works as well. So here, how much moles were in excess? 2 moles of O2 were in excess. And then it asks <clears throat> um, how many grams of, um, I know it says how much, but I'm going to solve it. So how much grams of H2O were formed? So here we have 4 moles. Again, I got that from right here. 4 moles of H H2O. And here we're going to multiply by 18.02. You should get somewhere around 64 grams of H2O, okay?